What is up traders? My name is Heath and this is Trade Talk. In this video I'm going to do an in-depth tutorial on OANDA and TradingView linked together. All right, I'm going to go over orders, the order pane, how to use it and all that. So there's not going to be much technical analysis in this video. This is going to be one of the first of many in a series of basic tutorials for beginner traders. So with all that said, let's dive in. What's up everybody? All right. So as you can see here, I have trading view pulled up and I am in the trading panel. Now in America, we are allowed to link trading view and OANDA together or forex.com. Actually, here is a whole list of the brokers in America that we can link through trading view. So wherever you live in the world, if OANDA is not um, part of your brokerage, page then you probably do not have the ability to do this however if you do have oanda on this um, brokers page in trading view then you probably do however tonight we're not going to use this and this is why simply stating if you're going to learn how to trade and you're going to paper trade first i strongly suggest that you just use the paper trading app by trading view all right because it essentially allows you to trade every single asset that trading view has now, if you want it to be more realistic and you only want to trade what OANDA has to offer, then use the OANDA because the actual order pane, the way you um, set orders is exactly the same thing. So it really doesn't matter. I just wanted to let you know that with the OANDA paper trading, you are going to be limited as to what you can trade. And with the um, TradingView paper trading application, you can trade literally anything. Every single asset. If you can pull the asset up, on TradingView, you can trade it through TradingView's paper trading application. And we're going to go in here. I set the account balance to $100,000 to make it more realistic for everyone. And we're going to get started right now. So I'm going to hide this. We're going to be using Bitcoin for this example because the markets are closed. All right. So up here, you have your buy and sell indicators. All right. These are your buttons. So like if you wanted to take a selling position, you would simply click this. Now, for some reason, there is no spread. OK, this is important. If you sign up for a brokerage account with OANDA, you're going to have the option to have an ECN trading account, an ECN margin trading account, or you can be spread only margin account. And I am spread only margin account with the spread only margin account. You do not get charged for fees for entering or exiting trades. They simply take their money through the spread. That's how they get paid if you do that. Now, if you have an ECN account, an ECN margin account allows you to get filled at the nearest bid or ask. However, you will get charged a fee for that and they will also charge you to exit the trade and they will make their fee. Basically, how they calculate their fees with an ECN essentially is you get charged for how often you trade for how big you trade. All right. And that's how the fee structure works. Um, I'm not sure how it is with Forex. I have ECM broker um, for my stock trading and all that, but I've, I've always went spread only through OANDA. All right, so moving on. So essentially what I'm trying to say is spread only is a, is a good way to trade with Forex. All right, if you want to do it that way. Now, if you as you can see here, when I click the sell icon, it brings up this order pane window right here on the side. Now, I like to undock that so if you click the settings wheel here you will see the very first option is undock i click that and then it undocks it so now i can simply move it anywhere i want to move it on the screen which i really love this feature because sometimes i'm watching price and i want this out of the way because if i'm going to execute execute a margin or uh, excuse me if i'm going to execute a market order on a specific price point I will simply wait until that happens and then I will execute the order. Now, in this order pane window, you can see that you have market, limit, and stop. All right, a market order will put you in the market at the price with the spread. So if the spread is, say, two pips on a Forex pair, this will put you in the market two pips from current price whether you're buying or selling it does not matter if you're buying you will be two pips above current price if you're selling you will be two pips below current price 
So that's how the um, spread works in the Forex market. You have limit order. Essentially, a limit order is basically used for pullback trades. All right. And then you have a stop limit order. Now, this is the one flaw I think they have because new traders assume this means stop loss. This is not your stop loss. Your stop loss is down here. When you click this, the default setting is 25 pips. Obviously, you want to know how many pips you're going to want to risk when you before you enter a trade. <clears throat> so essentially, you will hit your stop loss before you ever enter how many units you wish to trade with or the percentage. Like this right here is your percentage risk. You can set that to 1%. So let's go ahead and do that. 1%. So essentially at 25%, if I use 25 pips at 1% risk, it automatically calculates the position size. This is your risk percent window right here. And this shows you the amount of money that you are risking on the trade. So if you get stopped out, that's how much you will lose. All right. And then essentially this is your position size. With Oanda, it uses units instead of lots all right so if you're coming over from mt4 it's important to know that because units is 100,000 units for one standard lot so obviously if you put in if you wanted to trade one lot you would need to put in 100,000 units if you want 10 lots you would have to put in 1 million units all right they it, it's it's done that way for smaller um, funded accounts the stop order is not like i said it's not your stop loss this is your stop loss and then this section of the order pane window is your take profit all right i very seldom ever use this as i set another limit order to take me out of the position two-thirds of my position so essentially when price hits my target i execute i have a limit order resting wherever that i want to get out of the market and when price hits that essentially it takes sheds me out of the position by two thirds of the original position size. Let's get into the limit orders and the stop limit orders. All right, so with a market order, like I said before, if you hit market, it immediately puts you in, in the market. So let's, let's just go ahead and say, for instance, market order, I wanna sell right here. Boom, there is my order. And you can see, because with Bitcoin, the pips are very much different. And you will have to see this as of right now, this is saying that I'm 1,000 or 17,478 pips above price. All right. And I'm selling the market. So you can see right here is where, where I'm at, whether I'm green, if you're in profit, this number will be green. If you are losing, this number will be red. The way you exit a position is you simply just hit the X icon. All right, right there, close position. Boom, position is closed. And that ding sound that you hear, that's just trading view telling you that you either got entered into a trade if you're looking at a different monitor or you just got exited out of a trade via stop loss or limit order. All right, so let's bring back up the order pane. Okay, <clears throat> we'll stick with the sell side here. All right, so we now know that we need to have like 7,000 um, 7, 17,000 pips in order to make this look decent. And then see now I'm risking 115% of my initial count with that trade size. We don't want that. We want 1% right there. 1% that essentially puts in the exact amount of units that I need to trade no matter what the asset is. All right. To risk 1% of my $100,000 account, this will give you the exact position size. Now, a limit order. <clears throat> let's move this out of the way so I can explain this. All right, so let's say let's say we are watching this level here on Bitcoin. All right, here, let me do this real quick, guys. Just bear with me. All right, let's say we are watching this level here. That's not an actual level I use. I'm just using this line as a reference tool for you guys to make you understand what I'm talking about here. All right, so if I want to execute a sell order at this price, I would have to use a limit order. Why a limit order? If I don't want to mark it in, why would I use a limit order and not a stop order? Well, because price has already went through that price. All right. Price has already traded through that area. All right. And it also has here too. So you will use a limit order 
on retest trades. So essentially, the best way for me to explain that is if price goes to a level and it comes back to retest that level and you want to enter on that retest, you will set a standard limit order, which is this order here, and I will do that. All right, the price that I want to enter is 36885. All right, so we'll just type that in, 36885, and then there is my stop loss at 17,000 pips, and I will hit execute. All right, now, it says that I am selling this much at limit, all right? And this is my stop loss. But I will buy this much at market, all right? A stop loss is always a market order, always a market order. So your initial entry is going to be a limit order. Your stop loss is always going to be a market order. Now, in order for me to get triggered on this trade because price has already ran through the level Price has to come back up and touch that level again, all right? Now, if you put the price directly on the level, you have to pay attention as to how much, how wide the spread is because this is very important because I hear it all the time in the chat, in the Conquering the Markets chat with new traders. Man, I got stopped out and price wouldn't even nowhere near my order. That's because of the spread. You have to watch the spread. So if the spread opened up, to say five pips, price doesn't have to go up to hit your order. It can just be within five pips of current price and you're stopped out, all right, because the spread stops you out. And it's also the same for filling an order to enter the trade. So if price just comes up to that level right there and then leaves, well, if the spread is 1.5 or let's just say two pips, price has to exceed my limit order, whether I'm buying or selling, it has to exceed that level buy two pips so you need to adjust your limit order where you're where you set your limit order for the spread so basically if the spread was two pips i would absolutely have to set this down lower two pips thinking that if price is going to turn around right at that level so just always keep that in mind all right it would be nice if bitcoin would go ahead and move up there and trigger me into this trade let me go see how far away we are on a five minute real quick all right, this is a perfect opportunity for you to see that. So I'm going to move this down just a little bit, all right? And it's it's indicated, it's delineated by that red dotted line. That is my, enter, my entry for price has to run up through that level to trigger me in the trade. And that's the price where my entry will be. All right, I'm gonna move it right close to price. I'm gonna modify the order. All right, and immediately it filled me right there. And down here is where you see that you are filled, okay? And you can see that price is moving higher, so I am currently in the red. That's how it works. So if at any time you don't like the position, if for some reason you risk too much and you're like freaking out, you can simply close the order by hitting the close position and you're exited out, all right? All right, so let's go back into the order pane so I can explain stop limits. This is a stop limit order. Essentially, you have the only time you use a stop limit order is if you're trying to buy a breakout. All right. Now, if I wanted to buy, say, I don't want to buy Bitcoin down here. I want to buy it once it gets over a level. I'm not a breakout trader. I never trade like this. But that's what stop limit orders are for. A stop limit order means price has to get, get to your order and cross it for you to get filled or for you to enter the trade. So if I put a stop limit in and say I want to buy it down here at 36.94 on a retest, if I type in that number, it won't allow me. 36, what was it? Just any number. 36.702. 36.702. All right, you can see how this is still red. It's not going to let me enter it because you cannot enter a stop limit order in the body of a candle. The limit, the stop limit order has to be above price if you're looking to buy a breakout or if price is going down and you want to sell a breakout, the stop limit has to be below price. So watch what happens when I go to 36,908. 36,908. And remember, I'm buying this with a stop loss of that boom there it is so now in order for me to get triggered on this trade price has to trade up through it 
and then it will enter me into the trade. If if the, the once again the spread is going to count account for this. If price just comes up and even goes up through it a little bit and then trades away and you don't get filled, that's because of the spread. All right? You just need to look up here and see what your spread is and then readjust the level to accommodate that price. You can see we just got filled on this breakout. That was beautiful. All right? And it looks like we're going to get paid on Bitcoin. It's running away with this market. All right? So, once again, just in summary, a stop limit order, it says it just says stop order, but it's a stop limit order is only used for breakout trading. You will only use those orders to set where price has not been yet. All right? If you want to re-enter this on a retest, then you have to use a standard limit order. All right? And we'll just go ahead and put this one here. Say this was one, um, a half of my trade. Say I want to use 2%, all right, instead of 1%. So I would leave the risk um, setting at 1%. We will go in here and put 36885, 36885, hit enter. And there you can see my limit buy order. If price comes back down lower than the spread, it will fill me. And I will be in this trade with two different positions. All right. One position was the breakout. The other position would be on a retest. This stop loss will only execute the first original order. If for some reason, you got a limit order out there and you have no stop loss, just simply click on it on the number part, on the blue number part, or if you're selling on the red number part, and it will bring up your order pane again. Just simply click the stop loss portion of the window and then hit modify order, and boom, now I have a stop loss for my limit order. All right. So that's pretty much it. One more thing, I'll go ahead and show you how to um, exit two thirds of my position. Let's go up here to thirty six. Let's go here to thirty seven hundred. All right, thirty seven hundred. So we will hit sell limit. All right, two thirds of nine is six at price thirty seven thousand nine hundred dollars. So $37,900 and hit that. All right, so if price comes up here and goes further than the spread above that order, it will take me out of the trade. It will sell only six units, okay? Now, the stop loss will automatically modify, all right? So if you set a limit order like this to sell how um, six Bitcoins, because you're in the position with nine Bitcoins, this is taking two thirds of your position size off. So that way you can move your stop to break even and let the last one third position run. Or if it comes back, stop me out. Either way, I'm okay with it. So price would run up there. It would execute the order. Then down here, you would see that we are still in the trade with three units. And down here, your stop loss would say three units. Now this is very crucial, all right? If I exit this position, Say something goes wrong and I'm not liking what I'm seeing on the charts. If I exit that position, this sell limit order will remain there. Okay? Which means at this point now, if you forget about this or forget to take this off, when Bitcoin, if Bitcoin gets up there, you will essentially be shorting it without a stop loss, which is not good. So you always have to remember if you don't like to trade, if it's turning around, if you exit the position for whatever reason before your two-thirds position size limit order gets triggered, you have to physically, manually X that position out. All right, guys? So that's just a tutorial on how to apply to use the correct order in TradingView using Oanda as your broker. Like I said, this is exactly, everything in this is exactly the same. All right, so if you get familiar with this system, with this platform, then when you finally institute real funds into your, once you finally initialize real funds into your account, essentially you will be trading exactly the same way that you learned how to demo trade with. All right, and I strongly recommend that for every single person that's beginning to learn how to trade. Paper trading isn't about learning to trade, it's more about learning the platform. 
All right, because I am a strong proponent of learn how to trade using real funds. Not a lot of funds, very small amount of money, an amount of money that is okay if you lose it all because you're going to probably five or six times <laughs> if you're anything like I was. All right. I think every single professional trader that I know has blown several accounts. Some have blown an account recently, but that's neither here nor there. Just make sure you practice using your platform before you start trading with real funds. That way you get all your fat finger mistakes out of the way. That way you understand how the market order and limit order and stop limit order works. This way there's only no mis this way you have less mistakes essentially. So there you go guys, that's all I got for you. Um this like I said this is going to be the first of many of a series of me teaching beginner traders how to perform simple tasks to learn how to trade these markets. So, we'll talk to you next time. I will be posting my crypto weekly outlook video tomorrow and Sunday will be the forex weekly outlook. So with that, I'll say good night and happy trading.